Let's look at some problems that involve. Let's start by, by doing an order of operation question. So I've got two thirds minus one and a half times one and a quarter minus a half. Well, remember when we're doing order of operations, we have brackets, then exponents, then division multiplication from left to right, and then addition subtraction left to right. So bed mass. So do we have some brackets here? Yes, we do. So we must do the work in the brackets. So let's just do this over on the side here. I've got one and a quarter, and I have to subtract a half. So I need to convert this to uh, improper form. So four times one plus one is five fourths minus a half. Now remember when we're subtracting fractions, we gotta get common denominators. So I'm gonna multiply this by two and this by two. So my numerator of the second fraction is now two and the denominator four. So one half is the same as two fourths. Now that the denominators are the same, I can go five fourths minus two fourths, which is three fourths. So my question is now two thirds minus one and a half times three fourths. And I have done all the brackets. Any exponents? No. So moving on to any division multiplication. Yes, we have some division multiplication here. We have um, one and a half, or negative one and a half, times three fourths. So let's work that out on the side here too. Negative one and a half multiplied by three fourths. So we have a negative times a positive, so the final answer is going to be negative here. But let's worry about converting this first of all to improper form. So two times one is two, plus one is three. So this is really negative three over two times three over four. Negative three times negative three is negative nine, and two times four is eight. So this is really two thirds minus nine eighths, negative nine eighths. So I've done the multiplying, and now I've got any adding and subtracting to do. Yes, we do. We have 2 thirds minus 9 eighths. So this is going to need some common denominators before we subtract. Looks like our common denominator is going to be 24. Uh, so I've got to multiply 3 by 8 to get 24. And so up top, 2 times 8 is 16. And here I'm going to need to multiply 8 by 3 to get 24. And I gotta multiply nine times three to get twenty-seven. So now I have sixteen twenty-fourths minus twenty-seven twenty-fourths, which is minus eleven twenty-fourths. So just remember when we're adding and subtracting fractions, we must have common denominators before we can do that. But remember when we're multiplying and dividing fractions. We don't. We simply multiply the numerators and multiply the denominators. And if it was a dividing fraction, we take the reciprocal of the second one, and then we multiply numerators, multiply denominators. So there's an order of operations question where we use bed mass. Working with fractions, we end up with negative 11 24ths. Well, let's consider this word problem. 180 grade 8 students, and let's suppose that one sixth of them finish math 8 early and get a start on math 9. So the question is, if that's the case, how many students are actually going to be starting math 9? So the key word in here, so this is important information, 180 is the number, and it says one sixth, but this is the key word I'm looking for here, one sixth of uh, of them. So remember, of means times or multiplying. So I have one sixth of them, of the grade eights, so that's 180. So this word problem is really just what is one sixth times 180? And 180 is just 180 over 1 as a fraction. So now I can multiply my numerators. 1 times 180 is 180. I can multiply the denominators, 6 times 1 is 6, 
And now I can go 180 divided by 6, which is 30. So that would mean, and remember, when we have a word problem, it's always a great idea to actually answer the question. How many students will be starting Math 9? 30 students will start Math 9. Okay, so 30 students will start Math 9 would be the answer to that question. So if you're unsure whether it's a multiplier or dividing question, if you see if you see of, one-sixth of something, of will generally mean multiplication. Here's a bit of a tougher question. Frank gets paid $16 per hour at his job. But if he works more than 40 hours in a week, he gets time and a half pay. So time and a half pay, for those of you that don't know, is sort of one and a half times your salary. So you, it's not double your salary, it's, it's one and a half times your salary. That's what that means. Time and a half pay. So now it says he works a 45 hour week. So he's worked more than his 40 hours week, so he's going to get some of this time and a half pay. But it'll only be for the hours that are more than the 40 that he's worked. So how much money would he make at the end of the week? So what we've got to do is we've got to split this up into two parts. He works the first 40 hours. He's going to get $16 per hour. Okay, so for the first 40 hours, he gets $16 per, per hour. For the next five hours that he works, because he works five overtime hours, he worked a 45-hour week. So the first 40 hours was at $16 per hour. The next five hours he gets time and a half. So one and a half times his salary. So one and a half times 16. So here's a little multiplying question using fractions. So two times one is two plus one is three. So that's three over two times 16. And remember 16 is 16 over one. So three times 16 is 48. And two times one is two. And 48 divided by 2 is 24. And maybe you could have figured that out. 1 and a half times 16. Half of 16 is 8. So 16 plus 8 is 24. You might have been able to do that in, in your head. But this is mathematically how we get $24. So for his overtime pay, we now know that it's $24 per hour. That's 1 and a half times his regular salary. So the total money he would make would be 40 hours times $16 per hour plus 5 hours at $24 per hour. So let's figure out what he makes. For the first 40, for the first 40 uh, hours, that's 40 times 16, so that's $640 plus plus 5 times 24 would be $120. $120. And so a total, 640 plus 120 is $760 in the week. So how much money would he have made? He would have made $760 for the week. And in this final uh, word problem we've got here, the question is, suppose you grabbed a jug of milk from the fridge. Now this jug was two-thirds full, so it wasn't a full jug of milk, it was two-thirds full. But you and three friends are going to drink all of it up. So you and three friends want to split the milk equally. The question is, how much of the whole jug of milk would each person get or would each person drink? So this, we have a two-thirds jug full of milk, and we're going to take that, and this will be a dividing question because you're going to split the milk equally. You're going to divide this bit of milk amongst four people, you and three friends. So you and three friends means there's four of you. So this word problem should be set up like this, two-thirds of the jug of milk, and we're going to divide that into four pieces. 
So 4 is like 4 over 1. This is a dividing question, so we need to change it to a multiplying question by taking the reciprocal, or flipping the second fraction. And now we can multiply the numerators. 2 times 1 is 2. We can multiply the denominators. 3 times 4 is 12. And now finally we can reduce our fraction, divide everything by 2, and we get 1 sixth. So we can say, as our answer to the question, each, each person would have drank or got one-sixth of a full jug of milk. So there's a few uh, word problems that would involve multiplying and dividing fractions.